Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never seems to end. This is Chem 10B, Chapter 9, Solution Dilution with Reaction. In other words, beakers with ice. The unknown concentration story. All right, all right, all right. So this is page 157, 158. Exercise 9H, the very last two problems. These are the problems that are reaction problems, but where they have an unknown concentration and you have to work backwards to get the answer. And the setup is the same, so you always have to remember that if a reaction is given, you are doing the ice table setup. If there's no reaction given, you are not doing the ice table setup. This is a key to being able to do these problems. Recognizing the kind of problem it is and then going through and doing your work. Also, remember that if you have a reaction, a plus B goes to C, then either A or B has to have zero concentration at the end for certain. So there's going to be a limiting reagent that goes on because when you do a reaction, you do it so that you use up either one or the other of the starting materials. And so something is going to have a zero at the end. All right, so let's look at the problem and see what we have to do. The H plus concentration is 0.016 molar in a solution made by mixing 23 milliliters of 0.18 molar nitric acid, HNO3, with 35 milliliters of an unknown KOH, potassium hydroxide solution. So this is strong acid plus strong base. You know that the net ionic equation for a strong acid, strong base is always H plus plus OH minus makes H2O liquid. So the ions that are the acid ions, H+, plus, react with the base hydroxide ions that are floating around in solution, and they make water, a pure liquid. They want to know if that's true. What is the unknown concentration? What is that unknown KOH concentration? So we're doing beakers. We've got 23 milliliters of the 0 0.18 molar HNO3 reacting with 35 milliliters of the unknown concentration KOH. What else? The concentration is 0 0.016 molar in a solution made by mixing. So that's at the end. You see where the reading of this tells us that that's in the final beaker? At the end. Okay, so the H plus is 0 0.016 molar at the end. That's a big key, a big clue as we move forward here. All right, it's a reaction. There it is. The H plus from this beaker reacts with the OH minus from this beaker to make H2O liquid. Good. What else do we know? Well, we can add those two. 23 plus 35 makes 58 milliliters at the end. Good. What else do we know? It's an ice table. So we're going to go initial change and N. All right, what else do we know? The change is always negative. What else do we know? We don't have to worry about the potassium ions or the nitrate ions. All we got to worry about are the things that are involved with the reaction. And nothing even in the product side. So we're just going to keep track of the moles of the H plus from this beaker and the moles of the hydroxide ion from this beaker. Okay? So we need to figure out what we have here. There's a big hint, a huge hint. But before we do that, clearly the H plus concentration, easy enough to figure out, it's 0 0.18 molar in that first beaker. Okay. If there's H plus left at the end, what 
does that tell you? Well, let's say we were making popsicles, or lollipops, with a stick and a candy. If we had and made as many lollipops as we could, and at the end we had sticks left over, what does that say about the candy part? That means we ran out of candy part because we had sticks left over, right? If there's H plus left at the end, therefore OH minus has to be the limiting reagent. Right? All used up at the end. That's what it tells you, because if there was more hydroxide, it would react with more of the H+, and the concentration at the end would be even less. So that tells you that there's no moles of hydroxide left at the end. Okay, what else can we find out? Every time you have a concentration of moles per liter and a volume, or a concentration and a volume, you can find the moles. So, the initial concentration and the initial volume can give us the initial moles. The final concentration and the final volume can give us the final moles. Alright, so let's figure out what those are. A, we can calculate by taking 0.18 moles of the H plus per one liter and then multiply by 0.023 liters. And what's that give us? 0.18 times 0.023 equals. zero point zero zero four one moles initial point one eight times point oh two three is zero point zero zero four one to two sig figs. Let's calculate now B. That's initial because it was the initial concentration and the initial volume. Now let's take the final concentration of H plus and the final volume point oh one six times point oh five eight equals zero point zero 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 nine three moles final to two sig figs zero point zero 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 nine three okay so that's in the final solution at the end final or end okay so, this is sort of like saying, if you have $41 when you leave the house, and then you get $9.30 when you come back, how much money did you spend? Don't you have to subtract the two? Sure you do. I lined these up really carefully, lining up the decimal places and drawing the line, and now I'm going to do the calculation 0041 minus point zero 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 nine three gives me zero zero three one seven and when I draw the line that's zero point zero zero three two moles of H plus change. That's how much was used. Does that make sense to you? If you started with this much and you ended with that much, that much got used up. So 0 0.0032 
goes right there in the change. It's a one to one ratio guys and if it's a one to one ratio and you used up 32 sticks you used up 32 candies with the lollipop. Okay? You with me? So, if you used up 0 0.0032 and you end up with none at the end, you know exactly how much you started with. This is just an out, uh, a logic exercise. Once you find out what that is, those two are going to be exactly the same. So, this tells us the moles of hydroxide at the beginning. Okay? And if you know the moles of hydroxide initial, and you divide by the volume initial, that gives us the molarity of the hydroxide initial, which is the same as the molarity of the potassium hydroxide initial, which is what we're trying to find. Okay, so what is 0 0.0032 divided by 0 0.035? I get 0 0.0. 1 molar, 0 0.091 molar, 0 0.0032 divided by 0 0.035. I'm happy. So we've got two sig figs with this result, based on the lining up the decimals and drawing the line, and two sig figs in this, so the answer is going to have two. And you can see where, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio here, that 0 0.091 molar is going to be the final answer. The key to the problem, every time you have a concentration in moles per liter times the volume in liters, that gives you a moles, and you're going to need to figure that out. Initial, final, and then the difference between the two, understanding and knowing that if there's H plus left, OH minus is limiting, which means the OH gets all used up at the end. This is just a, a, a basically understanding what's going on in solution kind of a problem. You're going to see one of these on Quiz 8. You're going to see one of these on the final in Chem 110B. So, practice up and be ready. Good luck.